In this video, I'm going to take a closer look at suspension components for the Jeep Wrangler and Gladiator platforms, specifically control arm drops and long arm kits. I will go over the pros and cons of each, at what lift height they become necessary, and what my experience has been with them. Both of these things are essentially designed to do the same thing, and that is improve how the Jeep drives. The advantage of going with a long arm suspension is that you're not just putting a longer arm in the factory control arm mount. What you're actually doing is getting a completely different mount for a much longer control arm. And what that's going to do is reduce that angle and give you a longer arm for the axle to pivot. If you think about it like this and say, all right, this is my factory short arm which I don't have very long arms in general, and this is where the axle pivots, as I lift the vehicle, that angle is going to increase. And when you're trying to go off-road and you have your arm at a huge angle, it's actually gonna want to make the vehicle sort of lift and separate instead of making the uh, axle come up and you roll over the obstacle more easily. So you really don't want a big dramatic angle for that control arm. You like to have it uh, flat if you can ideally so when you hit an obstacle it can move up very easily same thing when you're going down the highway if you can keep that arm flat it's going to cycle more easily it's going to keep that axle more centered it's it's just better and you can't really make arms flat on these platforms and still be able to go off road and have your clearance that you need. So you're gonna have to deal with a little bit of angle and a way to compensate for that when the Jeep gets much taller is you've got to go with a much longer control arm. So these negative effects of that angle are greatly reduced and the axle doesn't change position as much as it cycles. Now compared a long arm uh, to a control arm drop. The advantage of a control arm drop quite simply is if you've already invested in aftermarket arms, but you're now at a lift, let's say four and a half inches, and you feel like the arms are really angled and you're not happy with how the Jeep is driving, you can put control arm drop brackets in the front. A lot of times they're called geometry correction brackets. And this is going to take that control arm from this high angle to a more neutral angle. So it's not gonna be as aggressive. It's going to make it handle better. In my experience with them, it's not something that I would prefer for off-roading compared to a long arm, but the geometry correction brackets are less expensive. Uh, it really depends on what you're doing with the vehicle, whether you wanna go long arm or control arm brackets. For my money, I would go long arm. That being said, on the JL platform and the Gladiator platform, I've never installed a long arm kit because I haven't felt like it's needed it. Even on my larger Gladiator that has four and a half inches of lift, the arms are definitely more at a the, the extreme end of where they should be. And I would benefit from a long arm, but I'm not really daily driving that Jeep. I don't need that handling benefit as much. Uh, you get a lot more ground clearance with the factory uh, style control arms where they sit depending on whose long arm kit is. You know, Rockcrawler and Evo both do a really good job of making and offering high clearance long arm kits. So you need to be very aware of when you're buying a long arm kit, uh, how the arms mount, are you gonna be sacrificing ground clearance for drivability? And if you're not really wheeling in the rocks, that's really not that big of a deal. So uh, that's just something to mention. You still with long arms are gonna be looking at the same thing. Are there control arm bins that are gonna help with tire clearance? Uh, are there bins that help with ground clearance? What kind of joints are they using? All of those things still are applicable the big thing is investment in long arm is going to be uh, a bit more substantial than a factory uh, style control arm where it pivots in the factory arm mount so something to think about now it is worth mentioning that while the overall control arm geometry hasn't changed drastically from when the Wrangler made the shift to coil springs in 1997, the control arms did get much longer as the Wrangler platform evolved. This means that control arm angles can change more rapidly on earlier models like the TJ. For this reason, I tend to recommend moving to a long arm suspension much earlier on the 97 to 2006 Wrangler models over the JK and JL. You still need to be mindful of clearance, but the combination of the shorter factory control arms 
and the shorter wheelbase of the TJ really make it benefit from a long arm much more so than the JK and JL. Ultimately, there's no question that a longer control arm configuration will benefit the Wrangler and Gladiator greatly. However, it's important to note how those control arms mount if you plan on putting your Jeep in more challenging terrain. For daily driving, the handling difference between a control arm drop and a long arm suspension will be slightly less noticeable. Hopefully that clears up any confusion on the long arm versus control arm drop debate. If you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And if you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. As always, thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the trail.